Addicts. Uh, it was like, you know, there's there probably, there's probably like 20 acts on it. Tony, Tony Trish Gifford won as well. And uh, there was, uh, and Pete Seeger, who was uh, closing the show. Now, I was at Pete's 90th birthday, and that was a few years back at Madison Square Garden. So Pete, you know, getting up there, and so people were, were concerned about it, because he was, you know, all these acts, and it's a long show, it's over three hours long, and Pete's playing last, because he's fucking Pete Seeger. So, you know, he's like, you know, he's wandering around the place. Now, Pete uh, has kind of a sweet tooth, so he went back and forth between the buffet, and he didn't touch any of the sandwich stuff, and stuff, it was like all about cupcakes and rugula as far as I <laughs> He'd just, uh, he'd go back and hit that stuff and he'd stand on the side of the stage for a while. He never sat down. And uh, just, you know, there the whole evening. And people, you know, were a little concerned because he is, he is uh, getting up there. But he, uh, then there was a point at which Pete asked somebody, the stage manager or somebody, if there was a chair that he could use and everybody started whispering about that because I mean and he, he wanted that chair for his performance and everybody said hey, have you ever seen Pete Seeger perform sitting down I, I never have and so this whisper went through the whole it's like Pete just asked for a chair <laughs> <laughs> you know, rumors started flying and so it's the only chair they could get him because it was Brooklyn College was one of those hateful steel folding chairs that weighs about a thousand pounds and Pete's banjo he made himself and it weighs about a thousand pounds he had it hanging around his neck about halfway through the show he gets his banjo and he tunes it up and he walks around the rest of the night with the banjo around his neck and there's still you know two hours of show to go because the thing's running behind like they always did and then they give him the chair so he's walking around with the banjo around his neck and the fucking chair everybody starts to <laughs> I think we should help him with that. So it just went on forever. And finally it came the time and Nora Guthrie said, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pete Seeger. And Pete walked out to the stage, the banjo, and he's got the chair with his left hand. And he gets out there and he sets the chair down and he unfolds it. And he reaches in his shirt pocket and he unfolds this the Woody Guthrie lyric that he was going to sing and he what <laughs> he, he, he doesn't do in his performance besides not sit down he also doesn't wear his glasses and he figured out that he could see it if it was just that was exactly the right amount of elevation so he's going to be okay Steve's hammer for Pete. And you're gonna have to sing it with me because that's what Pete would do. That's what Pete, that's what Pete does now. He's my hero. I gotta practice doing this because he goes out and plays shows and his voice is getting weak, but he can like he gets the audience to sing the whole fucking show for him. I think one line and then it's like but I'm gonna sing you the song, but it'll come to a part where you're supposed to participate in and when you, and when it gets here, you should sing because if you know, if you don't everybody will think you're Republicans. And if you are Republicans, then everybody will know you were here. <laughs> Oh, 
choking ocean is clean Kids don't die for gasoline Three, four. One of these days I'll lay this hand. 